Welcome to the next video in our series. We're again picking on the Sanyo VCR. Our symptom for today, when you press play, you get a blue screen. It also won't record. You make a recording on this machine and it won't play on another machine. If I put it in pause, I have a picture. I can advance one frame at a time. I go back to play. My picture mutes. I go to fast forward. I have a picture. I go to search back. I have a picture. What the heck? Why is it not working? Let's pull the top off it and take a look. So we got our scope. Take a look at our regular signals. See what we got. Ground our scope. We'll hook our scope up to our, our RF switch, our RF test point. This will show us RF coming off the heads even with the tape not moving because the the head drum is still spinning. You see, if I slow the head drum down, we got nothing. Press play. We got signal. Well, what the heck? We lost it. Oh, our signal's coming back again. I don't know if I can trigger this or not. Uh, I'll try triggering on TV. It's probably not going to trigger. I don't have a. I don't have an external test point, and maybe I should hook that up. There's our switch point. There's our trigger. So we go back to channel one. Okay. Look at what's happening here. Our RF is going up full. And our RF is going down to nothing. Now our RF is coming up again. If I pause it. We got full RF. So we know the head's working. We know the switch point is working. Our switching signal's there. We are, both of our heads are working. So why the heck is this thing not working in play? What signal are we missing? In a video cassette recorder, how is the tape synchronized? How is the tape speed synchronized so that we know where each video frame begins because this is what's happening here we need to know where our video tracks start our head drum is spinning it is providing a reference pulse to tell the the switching circuitry where the head is the head is here the head is here it's at the beginning or the end of its of its scan that's called the drum servo. There's another servo called the capstan servo. The capstan servo ensures that our capstan motor is going not only the correct speed, but the correct phase. And how the capstan servo works is it reads a signal called a control track, which is recorded along the bottom edge of the tape. The control track is read from the control track head, which is this one right there. That's your audio control erase head. Control track is on the bottom of that head. If you lose your control track, you lose your ability to play back the tape. And you lose your ability to record. Control track head can get dirty. The control track head can fail. The control track can develop a problem. So if we clean this head, let's see if it fixes the problem. So we'll just eject the tape. We'll get our trusty old Q-tip out, put some cleaner on it. I'm just using Freon TF this time to get in here clean.
And there we go. Now you see our waveform is, is good. A slight little bit of a level difference between one and the other, but it's flat. If our alignment was out, and this is, by the way, the proper way to do the alignment is, first of all, you need to have a, a tape that's correctly recorded, which I believe this one probably is. But if your alignment is out, you want to make sure that the uh, RF waveform is flat. Let me grab a screwdriver and we'll show you what happens if your alignment is out. So we're going to intentionally just bugger this up. Maybe we're not. These guys are pretty tight on this machine. Yeah, we'll intentionally bugger this up. So that's a misalignment there. It's not to the point where it's going to affect the picture yet. But if I make it worse, now it's affecting the picture. And if I bugger up the other guy post here, now we're severely affecting the picture. You can see what's happened here. What we want is we want the waveform flat. So we play back an alignment tape and we adjust our waveform to bring our edges flat. So there's the exit guide there and the entrance guide was this other one on the other side and I'll just tweak that back. And now we've got, well we don't yet because I'm putting pressure on it here. But we're getting closer. Okay, we got a flat waveform there. See, the thing is, this machine's got automatic tracking, so it's actually going to try and compensate for a tracking error by hunting. So while you're adjusting, it's fighting against you. But I'm, I'm pretty close here. I'm not as good as I was originally, that's for sure. But uh, I'm a lot better than I screwed it up to. There we go. Now we're pretty close to being flat. We should have sound and everything on here too. Which we do. There's your servo problems. Loss of control track caused that symptom. Again, on the digital monitor that's in here, my big screen, I wouldn't have seen anything. Well, I had a blue screen on this one. So on a the digital TV, it probably would have worked exactly the same. I didn't try it, but it, the outcome would have been the same on the digital TV as it is on this little um, analog TV. But I, I can't stress how important it is if you're doing any work on old VCRs especially and camcorders, but it's, it's really a good idea to have a good old conventional analog CRT TV on your test bench. If you've only got a flat panel monitor, you're gonna miss out on a lot of the symptoms and you're gonna miss out on a lot of the troubleshooting uh, capabilities of an analog monitor. The same as a scope. That's the end of my recording, that's where it ended. Um, the same as a scope. This is gonna be interesting because this, this is the tape that had a piece that was broken off on it in the shell. And it has since now, well, you can see what's happened here. The piece of the shell that broke off is actually uh, gone into the, uh, the tape is looped around it. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens when that piece of plastic inside the shell comes flying out. Is it going to end up in the machine or is it going to end up jamming the tape or is it going to rip the tape? I think we just found out. It's still in the shell. Now we can hear it. But uh, it 
Anyway, that was the, the fault for the. Uh, so we've 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 looked at uh, in the series. We've looked at a mechanical problem. We've looked at a drum loss of switching pulse from the drum, and we've looked at control track due to a, a dirty control head. And that was a fault that I planted on it as well, just to show you guys what the uh, symptom looks like on that. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll catch you in the next one.